Okay, so I'm going to pull off this alternator now. So you can see I've already undone my two uh, battery terminals. That's a, a 10 millimeter for the both of those. So that's off. And then, uh, as you'll see, there are two bolts down here. These are uh, 15 millimeter. I've already got them loose there. And then there's another 15 millimeter down here. You'll need to get all, you'll usually want to get those two loose. And then you'll need to remove this one to get the alternator out. There is a plug. It's got a, uh, a standard just squeeze connection there. And then this. And then we have this one nut here on the uh, alternator we need to get off. That's the, uh, the main charging cable. Then coming around to the front, you'll see that we've got uh, this, this bracket, which the only purpose this bracket serves at all is for a mount for the upper engine cover. So if you're like me and you never run your engine cover, you can just leave this bracket off and have a little bit less junk in the way. Otherwise, there are two bolts, one down here, one down here. These are 13 millimeters. And with that, you can have the alternator off. And then we'll be able to get down in here, and uh, you'll see there's that plug that we're looking at on the uh, intake side. OK, so now I need to remove the, uh, the intake pin um, plug. So that is a 5 millimeter plug right there. So you'll need a 5 millimeter uh, hex head. So there's one there. And as you'll see, there's one right back here, just right next to that uh, coolant hose. So I'll remove those and then uh, I'll start turning it over and put in the pins. So let me go ahead and show you what the uh, factory tools look like now before I start putting them in. So this is the uh, is the uh, <clears throat> flywheel flex plate uh, locking pin. So as you can see it's just a thin little pin with some threads on it uh, a little tapered in there and uh, it's not particularly useful as a tool. I've never actually been able to use this tool. I pull it out every time and I'm never able to do anything with it. So I always end up just getting a drill bit that's the same size as this and sticking that through the hole. Uh, next up, this is the intake locking pin. As you can see the eye on there. It's a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit bigger head at least, but it's pretty much the same dimensions here and these are actually interchangeable. But um, anyways, this one's meant for the intake. You see it's got uh, it's got some threads down here by the head. Let's see if we can get that to focus. There we go. It's got threads down by the head, so that's where it'll thread into the uh, valve cover. And it's got this tapered end, and that's where it'll go into, um, the, into the cams. There's a little hole, and it'll sit in there and lock that in place. Similarly, you can see uh, here's the exhaust pin. And uh, pretty similar in design, slightly different dimensions, but like I said, they are uh, interchangeable. And then here we have the, uh, this is the, the tensioner tool. So it's just got a couple little nubs here, so you can put that down into the time belt tensioner and tighten it up. So the part number on this one is 9660, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Yeah, that looks like a, a 9660 right there. Uh, let's see. This pin is 1053. And this one should be 1054, 1052, other way around. So 1052 and 1053. 1052 is intake, 1053 is exhaust. And then this guy is 1089. Let's see if we can see that there. 1089, just barely. So if you're going to buy the tools, um, this one's pretty cheap, but I'm not sure it's even worth spending the money on unless you just want to have it anyway. So, and then to give you an idea of how these two compare, let me set them side by side there. So if you can see that we got a little bit difference in length. And so you can actually, you can interchange them and they'll still work. But if you were going to uh, buy just just one of these or two of these, if you could only find the same one, I'd recommend getting two intake pins because the intake's a little bit longer. Um, I know that's been an issue for a couple of people. They were only able to buy the intake for whatever reason and not the exhaust. So in any case, um, if you you know if you're going to buy them, buy you know each each one of them. But for whatever reason, you can use two of these instead of two of these. So. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and uh, I'll get these put in, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've got both cam locking pins in now. 
And so, uh, as you can see, they're nice and easy to turn in. There's absolutely no bind on these. I can run them all the way in by hand, no bind. Same thing with this one over here. I, I know you can't really see that that well, but I can run it in and out with no bind whatsoever. So what I've done is I put a 21 millimeter down here on the breaker bar, and I've turned the engine over by hand, left and right, until I found the holes. Now, usually what you end up having to do for this is it's kind of hard to locate the hole using just the tool. So you can take something skinny or small or whatever you have happen to be around. Um, this case is a little bit too small. I ended up using a, uh, a short little drill bit. Well, not short, but small little drill bit like this. And I felt in through the hole. And when I felt that I, was, that I found the, uh, the hole in the cam, I was able to put this tool up and then turn the crank back and forth just little increments until this went in really nice and smooth. And when this one goes in without any bind at all, you'll also find out this one goes in without any bind at all. Now, it is possible to, uh, to put them in, get them threaded, and then just run them in with a wrench or something. Don't do that. It'll be off a little bit. Make sure they go in without any bind at all, and you can do it by hand. If it's not going in by hand, then something's a little bit off. Sometimes what you'll find is that you can put in this one nice and easy by hand, and then the other one doesn't want to go in nice and easy by hand, in which case just turn it a little bit until you can screw it in. I think that's caused by some stretch in the belt, and there's just a little bit of play in between the two. So even now, though, with, the, uh, with these cam locking pins in place, I can put the, uh, uh, the 21 millimeter down here on the crank, and I would actually be able to turn this back and forth just ever so much. So you want to be careful with this and make sure that you've got these both in as easily as they'll go, and then from there, we can go ahead and pull these off. So now that I've gotten these pins in place, I'm going to go down below and I'm going to check and see if my flywheel lines up. If I can get my flywheel pin through, then I'm good. If not, I need to take this and I need to turn it 180 degrees over and then I'll be good. So hopefully this is it and I don't have to do this again because it's a little bit of a chore to get these things in where they go in really nice and easy. So next we'll go down to the flywheel and try putting in the flywheel pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this pin and I'm going to go find a uh, similar sized drill bit that's just the exact same size as this and I'll put that through. Because if I try to put this through it won't go in far enough with these threads and the end of it will just not quite go through correctly. So I'll get a drill bit that allow me to have more protrusion in through that hole. It's about this length. Okay so what I have here is a quarter inch drill bit and it's just slightly smaller than the diameter of the shaft. Uh, a 5 16th is just a little bit bigger so I didn't use it. If you're a machinist you may have something around in the 30 seconds or 64 so it'll be a little bit closer. But uh, generally this quarter inch drill bit will work just fine. Alright, so here's the fun part. I've got this pin through. I got lucky on the first try. There's my drill bit there. So this is very difficult to see. You probably won't ever really be able to see the hole. But you can stick this through, it slid right on in, there's no wiggle, it's nicely, just perfect. <laughs> Got real lucky this time. So, to give you an idea where we are, we're right underneath the passenger door. Under here is the oil filter, and we're looking up above the exhaust. And, if I get in here, you can just see it right in there. Other ways to come up from underneath, this is where you'll reach in with your hand. So, I've got this in here, let me see if I can get the camera up for you to see it. Yeah, so you can just kind of make it out there. There's a hole, and then there's a casting right on the block. It says uh, something like 312, 212. So it's just above that. See, there's another rib down here. So you basically just have to feel up with your finger. Now, the threads are right there for it. So, oh, that's a much better view. So the threads are right in here. You can see it all the way through there. Those threads are in the cast rib right there, so they're often pretty gummy. This is why I just use this drill bit. So that's where the drill bit goes. We're all aligned, so we can start taking things apart. All right, so I've gone through here, and I've put a couple additional timing marks on. So I've got one here and one here. This is the existing mark that I've marked over, and I put a little arrow. Existing mark that I've marked over and put a little arrow another mark and then on down here I'll see I've added a couple to the uh, injection pump 
So this one I've just put a couple of dots so I don't confuse it with the other one and one up here. Now if you come down here and you look really close up here, let me bring over the light so you can see it, you'll see that there is in fact right in here a witness mark. And so you'll see that the the notch on the uh, on the pulley there does line up with the witness mark so we know that's in time so that's how you know that the uh, the injection pump is in time with everything else at 90 degrees after top dead center so the injection pump is the only thing that has a mark on any of this stuff for you to reference later so you can look at that generally I find it's easier just to put a mark right here on the outside so you can see that it's all timed up down on the crank I've done similarly I've put a couple of marks right there so I put them on the teeth itself. You can see there's a white mark from where somebody else has been in here before. So I've got a couple marked down there. As well as, if we come over this way, you'll see I've put a couple right there on the, uh, on the outside edge. So I've got three marks down there. I, hopefully I can all get it lined back up based off of these. Um, I'd put more marks on, but you know, there's only so much you can do that makes it worthwhile and you might just get them confused. So I've got that mark on there. We're all ready to go. And I'm going to put on the cam gear holder and uh, break loose these cam bolts. Okay, so I've got the cam gear holder in place. Um, if you look down this way, you can see you basically just run these knobs in and uh, a little, little uh, I guess I don't know what you'd call that, a tooth comes out and engages the other part of the tooth on both of those. This will lock it in place. I can come in here and undo these two bolts. Um, if I was just doing the belt, I would just throw this on, take off the tensioner, uh, undo the tensioner down here, pull the belt off and put on the new one, and I'd just use all my timing marks. But I'm going to go ahead and just use this to hold these while I get off the cam gears, and we can pull off this rear cover. Okay, here are the uh, cam gears off, and then the uh, timing belt tensioner. So that's a 10 millimeter, and these are 17 millimeters. So uh, just undo those. The interesting thing is this has been a part before, even at 96,000 miles on this vehicle. You can see there is uh, a, somebody placed a mark on them right there. And if you look at the inside of these uh, gears where they mate onto the end of the cam, you can see it's completely smooth. There's, no, um, there's nothing to time it itself. Now you see that little dirty mark there right next to that white mark? If we come over here and take a look, you'll see there's actually a notch on the two uh, cam gears right in here. And so these two notches, one way to tell that you are you at least have these two in time is that these notches will always point directly at each other. So when the pins are in and they go in nice and smooth, these, these notches will be perfectly aligned. Now, you can look at the dirt mark and see where this has been on here, but there's no way to see that when you're putting it on. So, you know, like I said, these can be put on even if I put one on right now, you see I can just spin it all around, and the only thing that holds it in place is the press fit. So, no way to time these, you have to rely on the timing pins to do it. So, next up is to remove uh, the timing belt idlers, and uh, these are a reverse thread 15 millimeter. so turn these clockwise to remove them. So here is one of the removed uh, timing belt idler pulleys. And as you can see, there's some grease there that's been leaking out of the bearing. So the main reason we want to replace these is that uh, so they don't break and seize up and do damage to the engine, but because we've got this, uh, this grease that tends to leak out of them. So you see this is pretty common with them around the 100,000 mile mark that they're leaking grease. And some are worse than others. Some will have more noticeable play. But in general, I would say it's always a good idea to replace these.